How y'all doing out there in YouTube land? This is the letter on Juno coming at you from the wild, wild west. Well, today we got a fun one for you. We got a fun one for you. It's all about the Tide Light 6. And yeah, we got the new one. The new one just came in. The new one just came in, people. Fresh from Cold Steel. This is coming from GSM Cold Steel. Package slip. GSM Outdoors. Think outside. GSM LLC. P.O. Box 535189 Grand Prairie, Texas 75053. Item number CS26C6AA. Lindsay Thompson Tie Light. Unit piece one shipped, one ordered. Packaging. All right. <clears throat> so this is going to be all about my favorite size folding stiletto. And that's where my nickname comes from, people, is folding stilettos. I used to sell them on eBay way back in the day in the 90s. I used to sell Italian stilettos. But anyway, let's get into this one. Let's see what it looks like. Let me show you what the box looks like before I get carried away on it. The specs are blade length 6 inches, overall length 13 inches, steel S35VN, CPM S35VN, weight 7.6 ounces, 7.6 ounces, blade thickness 4 millimeters, handle length 7 inches, was it made out of G10. I always like to show everybody what the boxes and everything looks like. So, you know what, compare it, you can compare it, use this, compare it to, you know, anything that you buy from somewhere else. Make sure you got don't have a counterfeit. This one's coming straight from Cold Steel, people. This is not an online dealer or, or purchase anywhere else. This is coming straight from Cold Steel itself. They sent me a special deal in my, in, in my, uh, on my, on my sale, and, and they text me a special deal, and I couldn't resist. It was another 50% off. I got this knife for 86 bucks, people. 86 bucks. Couldn't resist. Couldn't resist. For that price, for S35VN and G10, six inch blade and a knife that I've been wanting, <laughs> it was a good deal. I didn't I didn't want to get at the other higher price, you know, it was like, it was like in the mid to like $200 price. Oh, this is beautiful. It's centered out perfectly. Fit and finish. It's actually a really beautiful knife, people. Coming straight from cold steel. Looks like the liner's even polished, huh? They polished the leaf spring. All right, let's let's let's, let's take it for a ride. Woo! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! There's new markings. This is the only one that I have with new markings. All these others that, you, that I'm going to show you that are in my collection, I've been collecting since 2001. The Tylight 6s, I think, came out in 2006 or in between 2006, 2008, somewhere around in there. I've been collecting those since then. But my very first one was the Titanium Tylight that was made in Seiki, Seiki Japan. And that wasn't a Tylight 6, that's why I saw it on the table. It was a four, the first ones were a four inch blade. Isn't that beautiful, people? Now I was sort of on the fence about this one, about the, about the clip blade, because it didn't look like a, a tie-in style stiletto clip blade. And I'll show you one of those a little bit in a little bit too. Because a lot of people don't know that the tie-in the tie stiletto has always had a clip blade. But it's more of a stiletto shape. It's more of a dagger sort of, you know, it's like a 
more of a slender stabbing type clip bay. <laughs> so is this one too, but it's a little bit wide. It's not as wide in this area right here. But this one looks cool and it feels good in hand. This feels really good in hand. Feels like the balancing point is probably right about, right about here, huh? Right about there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I like it. It's good. It's a nice one, people. All right, let's leave it out. That's the first one up. That's the first one up. The next one up are my old G10 models. These were the first ones that were made like this with the G10 up. And it's made exactly like this one. Only that this one is in the uh, the Leaf Springs DLC coated or, or or not DLC coated but has a black finish. I think the only thing is DLC coated is the blade. But the handle the handle these two handles are, are both the same. They're made the same way. This is the one that I carry. You always can tell because it's got a wear mark. That's for me carrying it and using it. And I got one to collect and one to carry. And I'm gonna get another one of these too, just in case I wanted to carry one of those. Well, the number on that one, it was 2079, 2079. 2079, so it's a high number. Maybe that's the reason why Cold Steel sent me a special offer. Maybe they're clearing them out. I don't know how many of them they made. When they when these first came out, these were supposed to be a one of a kind, you know, uh, you know, uh, knife. They were just supposed to have one batch that was supposed to be made, and both of mine came from that batch. And these were real expensive when they first came out. But I got deals of mine too. You know, I always get deals. I always get deals. I always get the deals, people. And that's those. This one's the same thing. DLC coded, CTS6HP. You can still get these. Now they have CPMS 35VM blades with DLC coding. But these are the original ones, the very original. The very first ones made like this. They were like a special edition knife. Now the most expensive knives that, that you were always able to get, that were always like the, the top of the line for the Tylite 6s, were the ones with the aircraft grade um, 7075 aluminum handles. Now 7075 or 6061 aircraft grade aluminum is awesome. It's awesome. To me, it's just as good as titanium, people. You know, titanium is just heavier. You know what I mean? It's like, a, I don't know, but you know, as far as like, you know, lateral strength and you know, the strength in your handle and stuff like that. If you got something that's made out of 6061, that's all you need. That's strong. And it's gonna be a lot lighter than the titanium. So to me, it's more desirable. And, but you know, I, I love titanium too though. So I don't want not titanium, but I think sometimes titanium is like over, uh, over appreciated or, or uh, hyped up or something. I, Cause I think aluminum does just as good as a job as the titanium does when you talk about knife handles. You know, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about knife handles. But anyway, I, I think I got these in order. I think this might be the Oz 8 one. Yep, Oz 8A. And these were top of the line when I bought them. These were like the most expensive tie lights that you can get when I purchased these. None of these have been carried either. These are all collectors. These three right here, I, I got them just to collect. This is a collection that's been, you know, amassed over, you know, 20, what? 23 years, about 23 years, 2001 is 2024 now. And I'll show you the very first one I got after I show you these. Oh, next one that we need to go to the next one. I'm sorry, people, I'm skipping over things. This one should be the CTS 6HP. Yep, CTS 6HP. We'll just fly through these people. And the, the, the blades are, um, 
they're bead blasted and then they're coated with the ED electric discharge plating. And that's what the, the handles, is, or handles are coated with, electric discharge plating, and so are the blades. And this finish, people, is a super hard finish to remove. It's like DLC, people. It's like a really hard finish to remove. And, I, and I'm not just saying, you know, I'm just blowing hot, hot air. I know. <laughs> I know how hard it is to remove. I know. And it's a, it's a super hard finish to remove. And I, I wouldn't really recommend it unless you just determined to have a polished handle like me. Because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of wet sanding, people. Well, let's leave these open too, huh? There we go. Now we're going to play dominoes here. All right. Next up. Now this is one. This blade on this one is the original Tylite 6 blade that I bought back when these first came out. I can't remember if it was like 2006 or 7 or something like that. It seemed like it was like right around that area right there. And, th and it was on a knife with a handle like this. And the Zytel handle. And this is like the first generation handle. And these are from like the first when, when these first came out too also. And I got an old beat up um, 7075 aluminum top of the line one off of eBay for a very good price. You know, super cheap. The blade was really messed up. But all I wanted was the handles. Because I wanted to do the handles like I did this one. Why? Because this one has a polished blade. And it was my original one, and I just wanted to do it proper. I still may do the handle all the way, but I sort of got tired of trying to wet sand it, and I just polished it out and left it like that and gave it sort of like a warm, pocket-worn look. Because I sort of like the way it looks like this, too. That's a lot of work to get that finish all the way off, people. A lot of work. So you can sort of see what it looks like not totally finished. As far as the handle, I'm talking about the handle. All right. Next up, this is my favorite. This has got to be like this and this and my G10 one. I think are my two favorites, people. Now this whole entire collection. These two are my favorites. And then I have one that's in third place, and it's a Zytel one, and it's this one. We'll, we'll see. You'll see that one in a minute. But this was made out of uh, this one. I swapped the parts on it. I swapped the parts on it. And I'll show you that one in a minute too. But this is a special edition Lindsay Thompson 440C signature blade. It's number 154. It's when they first came out. That's why I made this one. Absolutely love it, people. This is one that I carry all the time. This one gets carried a lot. It's another one of my favorite motorcycle knives. I forgot to pull one of these out the other day when we were talking about knives. About big knives. Should have pulled one of these out, too, because I carry these a lot, too. <laughs> when I go on long motorcycle rides. Next up. Let's get into the OGs. These are the original ones from the mid to late 2000s. These are over 15 years old at least. These have never been used. These were the collectors. These are Oz 8. With the original handle scales, that's the original handle pattern. And this pattern was kind of cool too because you could put your finger in here and it gives you a lot of control over the blade. So, you know, it works really well. I absolutely love these knives, people. I love the Tylex 6. Like I said, it's like the only liner I like that I like. <laughs> it's like one of the only liner likes I really like. And this was, a, oh, let me get, let me go to this one for next. And this was the next pattern 
they didn't have the, they didn't have the crisp blade yet. This was the next pattern. This is Oz 8. And when I say the pattern, I'm talking about the handle scales. This came out later, like 2012 or something. A lot later. And that's the same thing though. They just changed the handle scale pattern. They changed it over to like this type style. This one right here has a black handle, but this is an Oz 10 blade because it was swapped over with this, uh, this one. This one has an Oz 8 blade on it. It's supposed to have an Oz 10 blade. My brown handle ones are the ones with the Oz 10 blades. But I swapped the handles because I wanted a black handle. So rate it, Chris. And this is my other favorite one. Remember I said I had three favorites? This is my Zytel favorite. I got a G10 favorite. And I got a 7075 favorite. But, you know, this new, new Lindsay Thompson is going to be one of my favorites too. Though. I like that one too. But I just think this one is too cool for school. I absolutely love Chris Stiletto blades, people. Folding Chris Stiletto blades. And then he put serrations on it. Oh, man. And that's an Oz 10 blade. You know, all the, most of the Italian, uh, Italian ones, they come with like a 420 series stainless steel. And a lot of times they don't even really heat treat it that well and stuff like that. So they do not hold edges. The, the tips can bend real easy. I mean, it's just like, you know, they're, 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 they're not the same quality as like one of these people. I hate to say that because I love the Italian knives. But I really just like to collect them now. I wouldn't carry them anymore. If I'm going to carry a folding stiletto, I'm going to carry one of these. Simple as that. I'm going to carry a, a Tie Light 6. I carried Tie Light 6s for about 10 years straight. It was like the only knife I would carry. That and the, and the other knife I used to carry was the Voyager and, and, the, and the Recon. The Voyager and the Recon and the Tau, when the Tower came out and I carried the Tower. But the first cold steel I carried a lot was the tie lights, people. Were the tie lights. They were the first ones. They were the first night that really turned me on to cold steel. That and the Archangels, because I was in the Balasons at the same time. Balasons and, and stilettos. Those are the two knives I like to collect at that time. All right, people. So we got that little bit of history on that. Let's get on to these. Oh, this is another one. I'm just going to open this one up real quick. It's just another one of these. You know, I get... I always, always get more than one. That's another original pattern one. This one right here is, has an Oz 8 blade on it, but it's supposed to have the um, Oz 10 Chris serrated Chris blade on it. And it's supposed to have the black handles because I always get two people remember that. I need to get another one of these. I don't have two of those, huh? Absolutely love it. Another thing that's cool about this model of knife, too, is that they're inexpensive. The Zytale ones, you know, you always can get them like, you know, I don't know, in between, what, 40 and about 70 bucks or something like around there. You know, depending on where you buy it from and what time of the year it is and if it's a sale or not, you know, it's like, you always can get good deals on them. This was the Plain Edge one. My Plain Edge Oz 10 one, and now I had a, the serrated one, but I decided I wanted a black handle. So I gave it a black handle. But this is the plain age one. This is the one I never use. The serrated one is the only one I've carried. This one right here. This is another Lynn C. Thompson Special Edition Signature Blade 440C. Chris. I bought three of them when they first came out. And this one's number 151. 151. Never been used. It's a collector, people. And this one's number 67. 67. Same thing. Never been used. Collector. And this one right here. This one, I'd swap the parts with this one. This had the 440C blade on it. And this blade and all the hardware was on this handle originally. And it was finished like this with the dark EDDP plating. You can see how I swap the parts. That's why I'm putting them side to side like that. 
I've carried this one a lot too now. You can see the red pocket clip, it's been carried a lot. I think it's cool. It gives it more of a military look like that because it has a non-glare blade. That's what I like about it. That has a light handle. These handles are very heavy. These are like nine ounce knives. This is like a seven ounce knife. So it's a lot easier to EDC and carry. And when these are in your pocket, when you're wearing like a regular jeans pocket, you forget that they're in your pocket, people. It's like, I carry these all day long on motorcycle rides and stuff like that. And I forget that's even in my pocket. It's one of the easiest big, big blades to carry. This and a Frenzy. A Frenzy is even easier to carry than this one. This one, the Frenzy, and the holdouts are all like super easy to carry for big blades. And I like the Frenzies, but I always like these better because I just like the way that the grips feel to me in my hand. And I like the length of them and the size of them. I just like these better. This one right here is the very first one I bought in 2001. This was the knife that caught my attention to cold steel. This and the, and the um, Archangels. They're the very first knives I ever bought from cold steel. This one has titanium handles, titanium liner, and titanium pocket clip. The blade I think is might be a VG1 or Oz8. I can't remember what the blade was. It's made in Seiki, Japan. It's not made in Taiwan. This one's made in Japan. And then my only other small knives that I have there, tie lights. This was like the first one next to the tie light. Other other one I just showed you that I bought. I think I bought this one. I bought my bought my first highlight six. I think it was like right around 2006 or seven, somewhere around there, people. I don't know the exact date, but I know it's somewhere around there. That's the Oz eight knife, and this is the newest one I have. This is the Oz ten knife, and it has the crisp blade. And I bought that when I bought these. Now, let's talk about. The new blades, the new blade shape. This new blade shape. I brought an example out here. This is an old style stiletto um, clip style blade. This is a kissing crane, a German kissing crane with uh, genuine um, deer stag handle scales and uh, solid solid brass solid brass. Um, what do you call it? Uh, bolsters. And that's the old style clip blade. That's what the old style clip blade used to look like. See what I'm saying? It's more like a dagger shape. And this is an Italian style knife. If, a lot of people don't know that the kissing crane, the, Germ the ones that are made in Germany, you know, when they originally made them back in, this was from like the 80s and 90s. Now they're made in, in China, I think. I think I think they sold the company to Ch uh, Chinese or something. But they're not made in Germany anymore. But this is a German one. This is one of the original ones, people, from the 80s and 90s. And uh, the parts, I was told by Angelo Capalone back in the 90s when I was buying knives from him to sell on eBay, that he told me that Falcon or the, the, manual, the manual part of AKC in Maniago, Italy, made all the parts for all the kissing crane knives that were put together in Germany. They'd make the parts and send, send the parts to Solage in Germany to kissing crane, and kissing crane would assemble them. But they didn't actually make the knives. They didn't make the parts. They just assembled the parts. They buy the parts from um, AKC or Falcon Knives in Maniago, Italy. So that's the history of that. So this is really an Italian knife. So that's why I'm, I'm just pointing that out to you because I want you. I don't want you to think that this is a German blade style. It's actually an Italian blade style. This this blade was made in Italy. It was made in Germany. And this is like a, a falcon knife that you can get now that's a manual folder. And it says Falcon Knives Italy on it. And this one came from Angelo. I bought it from Angelo. And these are like the knives I used to sell on eBay. And I just kept a couple of them. But they're all gone now.
I sold probably about a thousand stilettos on eBay. I think the order that I bought from Angela, I bought one order that was 500 knives, another one, and two other orders that were like, so I've sold like um, 1,100 knives on eBay. And then somebody um, said that I was selling switchblades. And I wasn't selling switchblades, but they had this little round thing like that. And I guess eBay said, oh, that might be a button. So it could be a switchblade. So they kicked me off of eBay. <laughs> That's why I stopped selling stilettos on eBay. Then I went to Bladebit. They used to have this other website called Bladebit. And I used to do a lot of selling, buying, selling, and trading on there. Josh at PVK is the one that used to run Bladebit. This one right here, this is an auto. And that's the reason why I like these kind of knives is because my first love was these Italian knives. And absolutely love them. This one right here is a AKC, Angelo Capalone, Automatic Knives Company in Maniago, Italy, AKC. It's got stag bull horn handles. It's a swivel, swivel bolster lock. Dagger grind. My favorite grind for stilettos is the dagger grind. Dagger grind and the Chris grind, the dagger Chris and the bayonet are my three favorite blades for uh, folding stilettos. This one right here, this is a Beltrami with another dagger grind. These are the ones I kept in my collection because they were my favorites. My favorite, my favorite handle material for these is the black bullhorn. I also like white pearl too. <laughs> but these have um, stainless steel bolsters and they're both swivel locks. These were like the common style um, autos that you used to be able to get. And when blade bid existed, that's when I used to buy and sell and trade these things on blade bid. Back in the day, a long time ago, people. And these are the ones I kept. These are the ones I like the best. Now compare these new knives, like I said, you know, these knives are sharp. You know, they're sharp and everything, but they, they don't hold an edge. They don't hold the edge very well. You know, the blade steel on them is not comparable to, to any of these new blade steels or even the, the real good ingot steels. Because like I said, these are more like a 420 C type grade. And Angelo told me that they used to make knives like that in Italy because they're supposed to be disposable. Because if you ever, because these knives were meant for self-defense. Because I guess in Italy, I've never been there, but he told me that there's like a lot of dark alleys and places where people rob people and mug people, and people carry like knives like this for self-defense. And he said if you use it, you're supposed to toss it in the ocean and get rid of the evidence. <laughs> so you know they're supposed to be disposable knives. And that lies, knives that you you know you, you should be collecting and keeping forever, you know, because they're meant to be carried and used for self-defense purposes. They're not utility knives, people. And then you could you, you could sort of look at them and guess how they're supposed to be used, right? They're pokers. They're made for poking. But these are my favorites. I always love the stilettos. The very first knife I ever bought was Italian, not, not Italian stiletto, but it was an Italian style stiletto uh, back in a Field, Field and Stream magazine. And for 99 cents, you can get a, 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 a little stiletto. It was like a seven inch stiletto. And for a penny more, they'd give you an extra one. And they were made in Japan. And I remember asking my pops if I can get one. And he said, yeah, you let me get it. And then I got, but that was my very first knife I ever bought. The second knife I ever bought was in was in Cub Scouts. And we had to have a, a camp knife. And we had to carry it at school in the second grade, people. You can tell how old I am, huh? They don't allow you to do nothing like that no more. <laughs> but in my state, we're allowed to own these, but we're not allowed to carry them. We can own automatic knives, but we cannot carry them. It's legal to own them, but it's illegal to carry them. So... 
I collect these and I carry these. That's the way I roll. But anyway, people, that's all I wanted to show you today. The brand new one. The brand new one. And yes, I think I'm going to get another one. I wonder if they're going to make a regular production line of these. That'd be cool, too. I think it's a cool, a cool, blip, cool addition to this line. It's more like a hunting knife, though. I mean, it feels like it doesn't feel like a um, it doesn't feel like a stiletto. It feels more like a um, like a big folder. You know, it's like I don't know, I don't know how to explain what I'm trying to say, because this blade doesn't really look like a dagger blade to me. And to me, a folding stiletto should have like a dagger style blade. You know, something like this. You know, that's a dagger style blade. Even though it's not a dagger, it's a dagger style. Same thing with the, the, the Chris. You know, that's a dagger style Chris. But, you know, it's still cool though. I still like it. But I like it a little bit differently than I like the others. Is that a good way to put it? Because to me, being a, a, me being a stiletto person, it doesn't really feel like a tie-in stiletto. It feels like something different. It feels like a hybrid. You know, like the American Tonto. So this might be the American stiletto. <laughs> anyway, people, I like it. It's a very high quality knife. And for the price that these are going for, you know, like, you know, like I've seen them on sale at um, Midway. I think I saw them on sale at Midway for what's 108 or 100 or something like that. But you know, Midway had them at a low price too. So I can't get that same deal off of Cold Steel again. I might go to Midway and get another one. I absolutely love it. I just want one more. I just want one more just for my collection. Just for my collection, people. You see, you know, you see how I do. Now, of all of these, I only carry about three of them. This one. This is one I carry. This is one I carry. And this is one I carry. All the others, people, are collectors. This one, this is the first one I carry, but I don't carry it anymore. I don't carry that one anymore. It's just a collector now. If I'm going to carry one of these, it's going to be one of these three. All right, people. Well, that's it for that. Hope everybody's having a great day. It's nice. I say for I think it's worth a hundred bucks all day long, people. I think it's worth like you know, you know, all the way up to one hundred twenty-five dollars. I think this is a good deal. I think it's a good deal. good deal. CPM S35VN. It's an awesome self-defense blade. Let's test it out. We didn't test out the sharpness. Just for a quickie. Oh, that's super, super sharp. That's super sharp, people. That's a super sharp blade. Let's weigh it real quick, too. Just out of curiosity. Seven point four ounces. They said seven point six. It's actually a little bit lighter. Seven point four ounces. And they said it had a four millimeter thick blade. We all know that that usually means what, 3.8? Let's find out. Because cold steel four millimeters is usually not really four millimeter. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, let's see what we got. Three point nine five. That's four millimeters. That's pretty. That's about as close as I've ever seen it. Three point nine five. That's really good. So I, I would call that four millimeter. I'll give it to him. That's four millimeter stick. Absolutely love it. The blade is six inches. The handle is seven inches, 13 inches total length. It feels really good in hand too, people. And I love the color. You know I me, mean? people, I like OD green. So I really love this color. Beautiful. That's it for that, people. Peace out, stiletto.